Hi, welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. Let's take another look at the Mendel Max. What we have here is a comparison of the uh, two different heat bed systems. The first, the one that's mounted on the printer, is what Trinity Labs shipped with the original 1.5 plus kit. And over here on the left is their upgraded kit. Uh, the main difference being that the new design is trying to keep the glass flat and keep the heat evenly distributed. And there were some problems with the first design. The first design had the the Kapton uh, heater, which is this bit here, it's got an adhesive back and it was stuck directly onto the bottom of the glass. And what happened was the the glass was was warping from the uh, from the heat. So I've done what a lot of people did. I tried various things. I've got an aluminum heat spreader under the glass and I've got some insulation under the heat spreader. Um, but I still have the four corners mounted and I still have some problems with the heat. So. Right now the, the printer's off, it's completely room temperature, and I put these squares of tape here just to see if there's any difference between measuring straight from the reflective glass with the aluminum underneath or the surface of the tape. So uh, just for reference here, let's, let's uh, take off the uh, table, 76.8, we're in uh, Fahrenheit, there's C, okay, and let's see what we're reading off the table, I'll go right in the middle first. Okay, the same. And uh, I'm in the U.S. Oh, I think it's time for a battery on here. Okay, we're back. Now the printer's on. The bed is preheated. And I just filmed this with the microphone off. So it's been at least 20 minutes the bed is as warmed up as it's going to be. So let's take a look at our five corners. Two oh five. Two fourteen. Two twenty five. One ninety four. And 194. So you can see that it's hottest in the center. And there's actually a hole in the center where the Kapton heater uh, has its wiring. So uh, when I come back next time, I'll have the new bed installed, and we'll compare these uh, these five readings and see how they compare. Okay, several weeks have passed. I have the new bed installed, and I've been printing with it, and it's working out great. Let's take a look at the uh, temperature range. 230, 223, 218, 230, 233. So not, not quite the plus or minus 5 uh, C. Well, let's take a look before I say that. I'm too used to Fahrenheit. Uh, by the way, I have the bed set at 105. So it's reading very close to the setting. I've got the thermistor mounted underneath and this is the bed with the new uh, aluminum heat spreader which is nice and flat and it's thicker than the spreader I had made and it's supported on uh, at six points the four corners and there's also a support underneath here and a support underneath here and uh, the nice thing is that once I've got it leveled it's holding just fine. I've printed out dozens of prints and I haven't had to touch leveling again and I'm getting really nice flat uh, beautiful prints this is an X end for a Mendel Max this is the motor end and let's see if I can catch a reflection there just perfectly flat and smooth I'm not using a brim or a raft and all the parts are coming out just perfect and I took a bit of time to get the leveling just right uh, getting six points on a plane is a little tricky um, but I found a method that works and uh, it's more or less set and forget so uh, this is a clamp for the X-end that goes underneath the rods anyhow good job Trinity thank you very much this really was a big improvement for my Mendel Max and um, I'm printing larger pieces and using more of the bed and I'm uh, just not having to worry so much about constantly leveling and re-leveling and uh, fiddling around with insulation and trying to uh, even out the heat on the bed. 
Uh, I'm not using any insulation at all. There's just an air gap between the. Um, let's see, this will get in there. There's an air gap between the heat bed and the G10 support. And so the layers are the uh, Boro glass, the aluminum heat spreader, the Kapton heater is stuck onto the bottom of the aluminum, and then there's the uh, air gap, and then the G10. And the old system had the corners supported with those plastic um, printed parts here. And the new system lets the glass and the aluminum kind of free float, and it's just held down by these clips. And the clips, uh, a slight negative to the clips is that it does reduce your usable bed area if you try to be safe and make sure that the nozzles never hit the clips. Um, if they, if they do hit a clip, it's, it, it, it can push it off if it comes at it from this direction. If the nozzle comes at it from this direction, however, it can get pretty ugly. So I reduced my, my bed size in Marlin to keep that from happening. And as a bonus, um, instead of running two strips of Kapton the long way, with the seam running down the middle like this, now I'm using two shorter pieces of tape, and I have the seam running across the middle, and so it actually uses less tape per tape change and I find that I don't really have a need to print all the way on that last inch top and bottom anyhow especially with the addition of the clips so that's a change there but overall a very good change it's really um, giving me better printing more consistency and um, a lot less curling and lifting of the ABS prints which allows me to print without using a brim or a raft and I can print out beautiful parts like this thank you Trinity Labs uh, if you have any questions about the Mendel Max, let me know. I think there's a lot of interest out there. I'm not sure exactly which parts people want to cover. If you want to see more about Slicer or Pronterface uh, or how to build a printer, uh, different things about the cooling arrangements, the different extruders you can use, uh, the different motor arrangements, the wiring, ramps, and so forth, there's a lot to cover with the rep wraps versus the MakerBot. The MakerBot, you more or less take it out of the box and... Uh, start printing, there's a lot more adjustments you can make here on the RepRap. So thanks again for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And post any comments if you have, uh, particularly what you'd like to see in future videos. It'll help me to make the kind of videos that you'd like to see.